Have a good day, my dear students. My presentation for today will be about hip disorders in children. I will begin, first of all, with developmental hip dysplasia. The term congenital dislocation of the hip, which has been used anciently, has been largely superseded by developmental hip dysplasia, or developmental dysplasia of the hip, DDH, in an attempt to describe range and evolution of abnormalities that occur in this condition, such as acetabular dysplasia without displacement, subluxation and dislocation, and teratological forms of malarticulation leading to dislocation. Normal hip development depends on proportionate growth of the acetabular to radiate cartilage and the presence of a concentrically located femoral hip. Girls are much more commonly affected than boys, and the left hip is more common, uh, more often affected uh, than the right. And in one of five cases, the uh, the condition is bilateral. There are many etiology and uh, pre predisposing factors that may predispose to DDH. First of all, the genetic factors. It has been noted that DDH tends to run in families and even in entire population as the presence of generalized laxity and a shallow acetabula. Other factor as hormonal, uh, hormonal factors because of the high level of maternal oestrogen and progesterone and relaxin in the last few weeks of pregnancy, uh, these high levels may aggravate ligamentous laxity in the infant. And for this reason, uh, it's rarely noted the presence of dislocation or uh, instability in premature babies because they, because they are born before the hormones reach their peak. Intrauterine malposition, intrauterine bridge position with extended legs with firstborn uh, babies and unilateral dislocation usually affects the left hip because in the usual vertex presentation, the left hip is adjacent to the mother's sacrum, placing it in the adducted position. In postnatal factors, as we see here in the picture, uh, swaddling the babies and carrying them with legs together, hips and knees uh, are fully extended. This uh, uh, is a usual cause or is a common cause, especially in the societies that swaddle their babies, as our country, for example. And for this reason, in the in countries or nations where or the mothers carry their babies astride, their backs, with the legs widely abducted, it's rarely uh, seen, the dislocation is rarely seen. There are many pathologies uh, seen in dislocated hip or in this condition, in DDH cases. The femoral head usually, first of all, dislocated posteriorly, but when the hips are extended, they become posterolaterally and then superolaterally in comparison to the acetabulum. The cartilaginous socket is shallow and antiverted, the acetabulum mean, and the capsule is stretched. And this stretched capsule is squeezed between the edge of the acetabulum and the tendon of the psoas muscle, uh, which develops uh, the hourglass appearance and will prevent the entering of the head or the reduction of the head in the socket or the, in the acetabulum. The ligamentum teres and the fat band becomes elongated and hypertrophied, and the uh, acetabular labrum and its capsular edge may be pushed into the socket, as we see here, because by, by the uh, dislocated head, femoral head. And this fibrocartilaginous limbus may obstruct any attempt of, uh, uh, for close reduction of the femoral head. The femoral head, this femoral head usually remains more antiverted than usual in usual baby. And with time, the surrounding muscles become become adaptively shortened. Uh, clinically, we have many degrees of instability, either mild instability, subluxation, and dislocation. The clinical features of DDH are various. The ideal is to diagnose every case at birth. For this reason, every newborn child should be examined for signs of hip instability. Uh, the first test is ortholanis test. The baby, uh, as we see here in the picture, the baby's thighs are held with the thumbs medially and the fingers resting on the greater trochanter. The hips are flexed to 90 degrees and gently abducted 
and the pressure is applied to the greater trochanter. In congenital dislocation, that means the head is already out of, the, of its socket, there will be a soft clunk as the dislocation reduces and then the hip abduct, uh, abducts fully. They, we can do a full abduction of the hips. This clunk is called the jerk of entry. If abduction stops halfway and there's no jerk, jerk of entry, there may be irreducible dislocation of the hip. The second test is Barlow's test, which is performed in a similar manner, but the examiner's thumb is placed in the groin, and by grasping the upper thigh, an attempt is made to lever the head or the femoral head in and out the acetabulum uh, during abduction and abduction. If the femoral head is normally in the reduced position, but can be made to slip out of its socket and back in again, the hip is classed as dislocatable hip that is unstable. And, and by noticing the skin folds, we can see there may there will be in unilateral dislocation, the skin creases looks asymmetry because of the shortening of the hip in the affected side. And by doing uh, Galeazzi's test, we can notice the shortness of the thigh in the affected uh, side also. And usually the mother uh, suffers from or, or has difficulty in applying the napkin to the baby because of the limited abduction. We can see now in this video the, exam uh, the uh, tests or the examination tests. First of all, we can notice the asymmetry of the uh, folds. We can do Galeazzi test by, uh, by putting the ankles at the same levels and flexing the hips and the knees. We look from the side to the level of the knee. If it's shorter than the other side, so there will be shortening and dislocation of the hip. And we do uh, Ortolanis test by flexing hips and the knees and we put the finger, the thumb at the medial side of the knee and the other fingers at the greater trochanter and we do an abduction movement with applying some pressure on the greater trochanter we feel the jerk of entry of the uh, hip this means that the uh, hip is dislocated, already dislocated Barnos test is the opposite. We put the thumb in the groin and we uh, try to uh, move the head of the femur in and out of the uh, acetabulum. We, we can uh, uh, note the, uh, here the abduction test if, and we note if there is any limitation of the abduction. These are usually the clinical tests of the uh, at, uh, in newborn babies. We should pay attention when examining the baby, when doing the ex clinical examination. If we have bilateral dislocation, uh, many signs will be missed. They, 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 they will be false negative signs because of, last of, of uh, 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 the loss of the comparison between the two sides. Contrary to, our, uh, to popular belief, late walking is not a marked feature to DDH. But if, we, uh, if the child do not walk until 18 months, we should exclude dislocation. And we should note during uh, when the child walks and begin, or, or begins to walk, we should note the limp or Trandlinburg Trandlimber gait or waddling gait because they may indicate the presence of dislocation. Trendlinburg sign, usually when the child stands on the affected side, dislocated side, he cannot, he, he is not able to keep the level of the, of the, um, the pelvis horizontal because of the weakness of the, the iliacus muscles or the abductors. Uh, so the, co the contralateral side will fall down and it will not be horizontal at horizontal level. Uh, examination 
usually we do uh, we, we we usually begin with ultrasonography examination and echographic examination because it's safe and it's uh, and it's an important investigating tool because the x-ray in newborn is difficult to interpret and they can be frankly misleading because uh, the acetabulum and the femoral head are largely cartilaginous and therefore are they are not visible on x-ray and echographic tests can be display, uh, displayed either in static or in dynamic mode. And sequential assessment is useful and allows monitoring of the hip during the period of splintage and during the treatment. We have many parameters in echographic examination, which are called uh, especially alpha angle and beta angle. As we see here, this is echographic section. This is the fe uh, femoral head, greater trochanter, the iliac bone, the triradiate cartilage, the labrum, and the muscles, gluteal muscles. We draw the baseline and we know we uh, identify the triradiate cartilage and the labrum. This line demonstrates the alpha angle and this line demonstrates the beta angle. They are very important to be measured. Alpha angle usually is, should be more than 60 degrees, so the, um, the socket is, uh, is not shallow. And the beta angle is less than 77 degrees. That means the head is, uh, uh, has good coverage. X-ray examination usually is more useful after the first six months of age. We do anteroposterior x-ray examination and we note the uh, small size of the, asset of the affected femoral head, the uh, femoral nucleus, femoral head nucleus, in comparison to the normal side, and the assessment X-ray examination usually is more useful after the age of six months. And usually do, we do it by, uh, by doing uh, anterior-posterior X-ray of the pelvis. And we should know, first of all, as we see here in this presentation, oh, sorry, in this presentation, the presence of a small delayed epiphysis or the uh, epiphyseal nucleus. In comparison to the normal side, we draw, uh, we draw and the we continue the assessment by drawing the horizontal line, which passes uh, uh, through the triradiate cartilage and is called Hilgenreiner line, and the vertical line, which defines the outer edge of the acetabulum, which is called Perkins line. Here we have four quadrants. Then. The acetabular roof angle is demonstrated uh, and is measured as demonstrated here, and it should be less than 30 degrees. If it's more than 30, 30 degrees, this means that the uh, acetabular uh, roof is shallow or the acetabulum is shallow. And we should know the location of the, of the humeral head nucleus or the epiphysis. If it is in the uh, inferior medial quadrant, so it's normal. If it's located in the inferior lateral quadrant, it's subluxated. If it is located in the superior lateral quadrant, as is shown here, it's dislocated. And we know the Shenton line, we draw the Shenton line from the the inferior, uh, uh, inferior border of the femoral neck and the inferior border of the uh, pubis, pubic, uh, pubic bone, it should be uh, a continuous line. If th this line is broken, the Shenton line is broken, demonstrate or refers to uh, the dislocation of the hip. And we note also Calve lines. In Calvin lines is drawn 
from the outer cortex of the ileum and the superior cortex of the uh, humeral neck or femoral neck sorry and this line should be continuous arc if this line is broken it refers to a dislocation of the hip and we do volus lines we, we, we put the, the, both femurs in abduction, 45 degrees of abduction and internal rotation, and we know the uh, femoral shaft line. This should point into the acetabulum. Screening is very important and is very mandatory for all children, especially in the presence of risk factors as family history, bridge presentation, oligohydraminos, and the presence of other congenital abnormalities. How do we manage? Uh, DDH. In the first period, from, uh, from zero to six months, in case of positive ortolani or Barlow's tests, we should use double napkin or an abduction pillow for the first six weeks, and we repeat the examination every week. Uh, if the hip becomes stable, kept free, and, and is kept under observation for at least six months. But if we have persistent instability to either dislocated or or dislocatable hips, they are treated by uh, application of splintage. These splints should be applied with uh, with the hip is probably reduced before the application of the splint, and the extreme position should be avoided, and the hips should be able to move. These are the golden rules to apply the splint. The examples of splints used are Vorosen, which is a shaped uh, malleable splint. It's easy to put and easy to, to remove, uh, but the most widely accepted splint is a public harness. That, uh, that keep, uh, gives the child more freedom while still maintaining position. And it kept the hips in 90 to uh, 110 degrees of flexion with limited adduction. Usually we do radiological control or echographic control to ensure the good reduction of the, uh, of the hip. And we continue the treatment for at least three months or until the age of six months. At the age between six and 18 months, we should do close reduction under general anesthesia and doing adductor tenotomy because the shortening of the adductor's muscles. And it's preferable to do arthrogram to confer a concentric reduction. Reduction should be gentle and may be preceded by, as we see here, by gradual traction to both legs. Splintage usually of the concentrically reduced head is done by plaster. This plaster spica is at 60 degrees of flexion, 40 degrees of abduction, and 20 degrees of internal rotation. After six weeks, we change the spica and we continue uh, up to three months. And always the stability of the test, uh, the hip is tested. Uh, we have a safe zone of uh, flexion and abduction. We, we should uh, avoid the extreme maximal ad, ab, abduction because it predisposed to avascular necrosis and the more ab, the abduction positions will cause dislocation of the hip. At any stage, concentric reduction, if it's not achieved, we should do open reduction. The psoas uh, tendon is divided, obstructing, uh, obstructing tissues as the redundant capsule and the thickened ligamentum teres and hypertrophied fat pad are removed Moved, and the hip is reduced in the socket. And if it's usually stable at 60 degrees of flexion, 40 degrees of abduction, and 20 degrees of internal rotation, we apply a spica cast as described above. If the stability can be achieved only by marked internal rotation, as, as is seen here in the picture, we should do corrective subtrochantric osteotomy. We cut the bone, we change the rotation, and uh, to neutral position and we stabilize it by plate and screws. In many in many cases, these are the, uh, the stages of the, the operation by opening the joint, by removing the fat pad and reducing the hip joint and doing the, the application of the capsule. And if we have a shallow acetabulum, it's always necessary to do a pelvic osteotomy. We have many types of pelvic osteotomy. The aim is to decrease the uh, the angle of uh, the roof angle of the acetabulum to increase the containment of the uh, femoral head in the acetabulum. For example, Salter in nominate osteotomy, as we see here, which is the most commonly used osteotomy, or we have the Bemberton pericapsular Bemberton osteotomy 
uh, or triple in nominate steel osteotomy. After, the, the, after four years of age, always the treatment is difficult, close reduction is difficult, and uh, the result of close reduction is not so good. So many, many um, uh, surgeons uh, prefer usually to do upper reduction, as we have mentioned. We do all the steps, upper reduction in pelvic osteotomy and uh, subtrochanteric uh, femoral osteotomy. But it has more complications, especially avascular necrosis, and we have more joint stiffness. But, but it's important to, to try to reduce the hip to prevent the late cicula of persistent dislocation of the hip. After the age of eight years, you should not do the operation usually, and we should, should try uh, to treat the cicula or the consequences of uh, the delayed or neglected DDH. Uh, that is early degenerative osteoarthritis of the hip. The complications of treatment of, of uh, DDH are the failure of reduction. So the repeated reduction maneuvers is very bad. We should pay attention for this. We should not repeat the maneuvers for many times. The avascular necrosis that appear at any stage of treatment it is very important and it's very bad uh, complication. And the, uh, the main complication at late stage or at uh, adult age is the, the development of secondary osteoarthritis, which is treated with joint replacement. The second topic, which resembles the DDH or developmental hip dislocation dysplasia, is the acetabular dysplasia and the subluxation of the hip without dislocation. Acetabular dysplasia, dysplasia may be genetically or may follow incomplete reduction of congenital dislocation, damage to the lateral acetabular epiphysis or maldevelopment of the femoral head, either congenital or as because of birth disease. Here, the socket usually is shallow, is unusually shallow, and the roof is sloping, and there is deficient coverage of the femoral head, superolaterally and anteriorly, and in some cases the hip is subluxates. The faulty load transmission weight bearing disturbances, the lateral part of the joint, may lead to secondary osteoarthritis. Clinically, dysplasia may be silence. And this is a problem. It's not, uh, there, there's no complaints. There's uh, no um, obvious clinical signs unless we have subluxation. And the ultrasonographic examination usually is normal. Uh, uh, but by time, we may have some pain, some limp during motion, during movement, especially at adolescent uh, age. And usually this condition is, uh, uh, even if it's asymptomatic, it's discovered only by chance or by, uh, by accidental x-ray for another reason. Imaging, imaging study and your x-ray study of the acetabulum, usually the acetabulum uh, looks shallow and the roof is sloping and the femoral head is uncovered. And uh, when we measure the center edge angle, usually it's, uh, uh, it's not normal and it's less than 30 degrees. This explains why the load transmission is disturbed because it is located in a short area like this or narrow area like this, not like normal site. The treatment usually, as in DDH, we use, uh, we use splinting, in abduction until the acetabular roof remains normal. But, uh, but we may use also Salter in nominate osteotomy. And in older children, we may need to make a, sh uh, a lateral shelf procedure, as we see here, or in nominate osteotomy, or even, uh, even other types of uh, pelvic osteotomy to increase the coverage area, or even hip osteotomy, virus osteotomy of the hip. The third topic in this uh, field is uh, the femoral antiversion and intoing in children. Usually children with intoing are, taken, are often taken to the doctor because of an awkward gait, abnormal gait. They, they walk and their toes are facing inside or the, the midline. And usually this, uh, this, this child tends to, to trip over his or her feet when running, but they do not have other abnormalities usually. There are many causes for this intoing uh, walking style or type of the, of the lower extremity. Either increased femoral antiversion, as we see here, because of the increased antiversion of the hip, the toes faces inward, or because of the tibial torsion, internal tibial torsion, 
which usually accompanies some kind of genovarum, uh, uh, usually ha appears in toddlers, but it uh, gradually resolves over a period of two to three years. In increase of diversion in young children, um, so if it's about 40 degrees, uh, so this, uh, this condition pu uh, pushes the, uh, the child uh, to, uh, to keep his leg inward, to turn his leg inward, in order to keep uh, the femoral head in the acetabulum. But usually, this decreases up to, upper to, to approximately 10, 20 degrees at, uh, by the age of 10 years. And we, we can note the gradual loss of intoing. Usually, these children uh, who have uh, increased antiversion of the hip uh, sit on the floor in the television position or in W shape and the knees facing each other. With the child standing, the patella usually turns inward like this. It's called skintic patella. The femoral neck antiversion can also be assessed by either ultrasonography or obtaining axial CT scan um, uh, examination. Physiological rotation abnormalities have not been shown to, to have any long-term consequences, so we should not worry about them. The cause is rarely serious, and the paternalistic assurance that the child will grow, will, will grow out of it and will get rid of this condition may fail to convince the parents and certainly will not satisfy the grandparents. So parental reassurance is the cornerstone of treatment. Should be obliged to, to leave this uh, the type of sitting in W position. And shoe modifications or the orthotic, uh, orthotics are usually unnecessary. Thank you.